and welcome to Val's Visions and Designs. My name is Valerie Bennett, owner and operator of Val's Visions and Designs. I'm glad to see you guys here today. Hope that we'll have a, a good amount of people on because I'm excited about making this purple tulip wreath. Um, if you'll let me know when you're on, uh, just say hi so uh, I can acknowledge you. Um, Casey, my daughter, is my moderator, and so she will be greeting you and um, answering questions uh, if there's anything you need to know, and then, of course, she'll let me know um, whenever, you know, um, somebody else needs to talk. Hang on a second. I think I've got something wrong here. Hey, Pam. Good to see you. Hi, Tammy. How are you? Um, I'm going to go ahead and try to pull this up on my tablet, so just patience with me here for a second. Um, I haven't tried my tam my tablet yet. Um, you know, my eyes aren't as good as they used to be, so uh, I'm hoping that I can keep up with comments. There it is. All right. So I hope you guys are doing good today. Hi, Vida. How are you? Good to see you. Great. Uh, I really love making these tulip wreaths. Hey, Shelly, good to see you. Uh, it's one of my favorite things, I think, to make because uh, it's just it's so much fun and it's not really that hard to do. Now, I have, I'm doing a little bit different technique today um, than what I did at the first video that I made because I have made this video before, but that time I glued it all straight into the foam um, board. But what we're going to do today, hey, we're just going to go ahead and wrap our um, our form in satin ribbon. So I am going to go ahead and pan down to the table because I don't want to keep you guys all day. And hopefully you'll learn a lot from doing this, I hope. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. So let me go ahead and pan down here so we can see, make sure you guys can see my table. Okay, so what I purchased um, is a just a foam, a foam wreath, wreath board. I guess wreath frame is green. Um, and then what I also am using, and this comes from, um, seems like the uh, comments aren't scrolling today, so I'll have to watch that. Thank you, Shelly, for sprinkling. Uh, what you want to use if you're going to wrap this with ribbon is you don't want to use a heavy uh, canvas ribbon. You want to make sure that you use, uh, this is a satin ribbon that I got from um, from Michaels. It is actually a 75 yard roll. So you can make a lot of wreaths with this. But the texture to it is almost like paper. Uh, it's it's going to be really easy to punch through. So, uh, hey Leanne, how are you? Good to see you. Um, so it's it's this is what I would recommend um, if you try to use a canvas or a heavier cotton uh, you're really going to struggle trying to push the pins and then you just want to get your floral pins and let's see I don't know if y'all can see those they just they have the little the little U line they're like in a shape and you can even cut them down a little bit if they're too long um, this is not a real thick um, board so when I first started off um, I actually trimmed down the uh, the wires on them let me find my wire cutters so you can just very carefully just snip snip them down a little bit and that way you won't be coming through the other side uh, I'm not seeing my daughter on here yet this morning hi Denise how are you good to see you Casey there she is Casey will it not let you go in as me today um, I hope so. There she is. Now I see that. Um, yes, actually what I have used, what we, what I purchased was, uh, and I have nine bushels of tulips that I got from Michaels. Uh, a bushel has about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about eight stems. And then on each stem, you'll push up your leaves. And you usually have about three tulip buds um, on the end of each stem. 
so you'll push them up and I'm going to show you how we cut them let's go ahead and let's go ahead and finish wrapping this first and then I'm going to go through it step by step by step okay guys so I cut I cut my little pin so it's a little bit shorter so I'm not going to fear actually going through the foam board and I've already um, wrapped most of this because I didn't want you guys to have to watch me uh, wrap it around and around but when you start it off I just folded a piece of ribbon down and used two pins to hold it to get it started and then you just take your uh, your ribbon and just tightly just go around and, and it's a lot harder when it's on the roll I knew I was towards the end so I was just able to cut it off you just want to wrap it and to, I think that the wrapping actually gives that foam uh, a lot more support because you don't want to have anything um, snap your 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 foam in two and then when you get all the way around and you've wrapped it and I'm just going to go around one more time just to be safe you just want to cut it and y'all tell me if you can't see I always worry I want to make sure the view is good again like I said this is just very lightweight so it's really easy to punch it through um, all right, so I'm just going to push that little piece over here. Yeah, I'm going to have to keep scrolling up today. Hey, Mimi, how are you? Um, good to see you. Jennifer, how are you? Kara, hey, Kara. Good to see y'all. Is it a T-pin? Let me look at the box. I got these at Michael's. It just says greening pin. Y'all can see that. Now, there's bigger bags I've seen some people that had much bigger bags um, of these this came 50 to a box and I will probably use probably close to two to mm, 100 maybe today not a hundred percent sure I've really never quite kept up with those uh, but again everything I'm using today did come from Michaels um, with the exception of the ribbon I have picked out a real pretty ribbon um, that we'll put in it at the end. All right, so I've got it. You want to put your pin in the center. That way you're not going to try to run through that pin when you're actually attaching your tulips. And you just push it through. That's all there is to it. You're just going to push that pin. And I've got me a little bowl. I've got a little bowl here that I've got lots of little pins. And I'm going to cut this one off again. Now when you start doing them, they'll actually be um, going in at a slant so you won't you know you won't have to trim each little uh, pin but just getting started I did want to trim them off all right so I'm going to put two pins in it and just push them in to secure that Okay, I'm going to do one more because it looks like I actually missed the ribbon on that first one. Okay, so now we have it all wrapped. It's all wrapped and good to go. It looks like an N. Uh, it it kind of actually looks like a... It kind of looks like a V. V for vision. <laughs> It's a V <laughs> or a U. Uh, so, I, I, like I said, I don't know for sure. Hey, Caroline, um, the box just says greenery pins. So, they're a floral pin. They'll be in your floral section. Okay. All righty. So, then let's get to the tulip part. So, I have nine bushels of each color. I have nine of the purple, and then I have nine of the more lilac. Okay, I know it looks blue on the screen, but I promise you they're purple. Okay, um, you just push up your stems, up your leaves to the top, and I can see that this poor little tulip here has got buds missing. So if you buy your tulips, if you see little loose tulip buds laying around, grab them because more than likely they came off the bushel. So what I'll do with this piece is I'm just going to lay it aside and save it because more than likely there will be another piece that might have one missing and then I'll just pop it off of this and put it onto that. So that's one, one stem we lost off of here. 
All right, here's one right here. Y'all see how that one tulip's missing right there? So I'm just going to take this tulip off of this one that only had the one, and you can pop them off and then just slide it right on there. And they have a tendency to do that. Uh, tulip wreaths are very delicate. So if you ever purchase one or make one, and you have a tulip that falls off, just push it back up in there somewhere, or take a little bit of hot glue and uh, put it on that. You seen the pin better? Okay, good, 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 good. Um, hey, you guys, I hope that you're doing good today. It looks like we got some stormy weather moving in. Uh, let's hope that everybody down at the beach is safe. Uh, it makes me nervous for them. I remember going through this so many times. So, um, okay. Hi, Candy. How are you? Good to see you. Thank y'all. Please share, uh, share and like and thumbs up on my page. And um, I appreciate y'all so much. Um, I will post this on my YouTube channel, so you'll be able to watch it as many times as you want to. Now, the difference with what I did this time and what I did on the first tulip wreath, you want your stems to be longer. So you want your stems to be about, I'm going to say you probably got about, about three inches, okay, because you're going to need this to actually pin it to the foam. Now I see the likes and the hearts. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. So just go ahead and snip them. And you can always snip off the excess uh, when we actually put them down on the wreath, okay? All right, so I'm just snipping those off and then throwing the stem away. Now, this time we won't use a glue pot, but I do have my um, hot glue gun plugged in because what I do is once I push it down with a pin, I go back and secure it with a little bit of hot glue, okay? So let me just lay these aside, and I'm going to cut one more bush for y'all. Thank you for sharing. Hi, Elaine. Good to see you today. Um, okay, one more here. Again, we're just going to push up the leaves. And this one also has a tulip missing, but I'm not going to um, put it aside. All right, we're just going to push up all those stems. I think tulip wreaths are so beautiful. Um, they're just so elegant. You can use them inside. You can use them outside if you have a nice covered area to hang them. Uh, There's something that can be used year, year round. Um, so let me see here. Let me just get that out of my view there. I'm just going to have to kind of keep scrolling up on the comments, guys. But uh, I did put the supplies. So I got 18 bushels of the um, tulips. Uh, I, purchased, I purchased four boxes of the pins um, just because I have... Uh, orange tulips too, so I may be doing another tulip wreath um, to put on my uh, on my Etsy page, or I may put it in my um, my shop at Angels. All right, so now we got all of our tulips cut. Any questions about the right type of ribbon to use? It really does make a difference. Uh, you don't want to get ribbon that is thick and going to be hard to punch through, or you'll just really have a hard time with it. Uh, hey, Kim, it's okay. It is. It is styrofoam. Um, I have one over there. Hang on. I'll show you what it looks like so you see what it looks like in the beginning. Okay. This is what it looks like before I started. And this one's actually, a, a, it's called a foam mousse, foam mousse floor craft. Uh, this one is 13.8 inches, so this one was just a little bit bigger. They were out of the 12s. I had bought the 12 earlier, so, you know, to do one this size, you might need to buy probably four or five more bushels of tulips, okay? Um, so that's what it looks like, and then you just want to use this satin ribbon that's very thin. It's almost the texture of paper so you can push your uh your your pins through it otherwise it's going to get really hard okay so are we ready to start adding tulips you guys ready yes yes hey beth how are you okay all right so what we're gonna do is i'm gonna lay out some of these purple and grab some of these 
and then you want to add, you want to pick up, I'm going to pick up, and I kind of stagger them a little bit. You see there's going to be a little bit differences in the size of the stems, so I kind of stagger them a little bit. You'll use five, and I just kind of lay them in my hand the way that I want to attach them so I know that it's going to look pretty. Do you see how I've kind of staggered them and lay them? They're not all at the exact same height and they're blended in there. And then you're going to come to your board, lay them down on your foam, and then grab your push pin and then just push it right through and push it tight. And I add two. I add two pins. Okay, so see how we're going at the angle. We're going to continue, you know, just like we did before, we're going to make a circle. Uh, we're going to keep going around a circle. Um, a bushel, a bushel, um, Beth, is just what you call the stem before it's cut. Um, I have a couple that I haven't cut down here. So this is what a bushel will look like when you go into uh, Michael's. Or you can order these online, guys. They have them online. I will tell you, these normally are $3.99 for a bushel. When I went in there and purchased them two weeks ago, they were on sale for $1.59 a bushel. So this is a good time of year to buy them. You're not, we're not in the heat of spring anymore where um, you can buy them cheaper now. And even if you put them up and save them for next year, um, you know, they're during the uh, original, uh, when we first started having some problems with uh, the virus, you couldn't get any tulips. But now they're back in stock. Everybody has them again. So go ahead and stock up on them. Hi, Karen from Michigan. Grace, good to see you. Uh, Marilyn, hi from Oklahoma. Good to see you. Okay, good. Pam, my cousin Pam's on here. Hi, Pam. How are you doing, sweetie? Karen, good to see y'all. Okay, so here's our first set. Did y'all follow me on that okay? See how pretty? It, it, it goes ahead. If, if, you, if you feather it in your hand, you'll get coverage on the side, on the middle, and on the, you know, and on the top. And then I just go ahead and add just a little bit of hot glue because I don't want that to come loose. Uh, especially if I'm shipping it somewhere, I do not want that to come loose. All right, we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to take probably two of the purple and just kind of layer them in your hand. And then we're just kind of, I guess you could kind of say feathering them, feathering them to blend them. And then there you've got your little, you've got your little bundle ready to go. You would want to lay it down right over the stems of where you just put it and then just fasten it with your pins. So I'm going to put two pins in there. And again, this ribbon is so easy to push through. It is not difficult at all. Okay. So now we're starting to get different color varieties in there. And then again, just a little bit. See, I can see that pin's really not down as tight as I want it. So I like to go ahead and glue it just to give it that little extra bit of security. If you have a stem that's coming out longer, if y'all can see that, how this stem is coming out a little bit longer, just take your wire cutters and just snip off that piece because you don't need it to be a protruding on, on the outside. And that will happen sometimes because the stems are at different lengths. Okay. How many flowers? Okay, I've got, I'm doing five. So I grab one. We need to get a few more of these lilacs in here. There's two. And then I'll pull in three, four, and then five. So I have five staggered and layered in my hands. Uh, it hasn't been making my thumb sore pushing these, um, Kim. I guess if you were making them on a regular basis, or you know, making them to sell and making a lot of them, I'm sure eventually it would hurt your thumb. And a thimble could very well be a great idea. 
but again, like I said, as long as you use this sat ribbon from uh, Michaels, it's not a heavy uh, ribbon, so it's really not that hard to go through it. You know, you just want to make sure you have all your stems uh, inside the pins. You don't want to miss a stem because then it's going to fall out. And then I'm just going to snip this little excess away. Get yourself a really good pair of wire cutters, too. Um, I don't know if you guys have got good wire cutters, but these came from Michaels. They don't really have a brand name. It says Bead Landing. I think they were they were pricey. They were probably about $30, but they'll cut through anything, and that makes it so much easier on me. On me. Always an odd number. You add... You dip your pins, and I have seen people dip their pins, um, and I just, I didn't want to, to just, you know, have the hot glue dripping across as I tried to put it in. So that's why I'm just adding just a dab of hot glue. This way I'm getting the whole, you know, the stems and the pin. So you see how I put that little bit of hot glue? I just dabbed it right there on that. Okay. And you see you've get, you're getting good coverage and you're getting lots of glue webs. Now what we'll do is when we get done, I'll come back and then you can add a few pieces on the outside if you don't get, you know, if you don't get it completely the way you want it. Uh, I think five is a good number to start off with because you can fit it all in your hand. Um, again, if you stagger them, that helps get your better coverage. So, you know, you stagger them towards the middle stagger them towards the outside and then just have a nice little lay there of your your tulips and then I'm just going to come down right here where I just left off and I'm going to cover right up the stems of those that I just laid down where's my pins here we go and then just push my pin right through you see I'm not really having any hard time putting the pin through but I do see that it could be hard on your thumb uh, if you were doing them in, in multiple, you know, doing a lot. And then I cut off this excess of the stem again, just because I don't want it protruding off of the side. No, Facebook is not scrolling anymore. You can't, you can't keep up with the comments. You're having to stop and roll them up. I'm not sure what's going on with Facebook again these days. I just love this color. Don't y'all just love that color? I mean, it's such a pretty light pastel purple, and then you have like your medium purple, and then with these, you have your darker purple, and if you can see the little inner parts of the of the uh, the darker purple have like a little green, uh, so it just looks so natural. Y'all think it's looking good? Give me some hearts. Here's what we got so far. I will say that I think doing it this way versus the other way is faster because you see how quickly we're coming along on it all right so again i'm gonna blend them in my hand i'm gonna try to get some to the outside some to the inside and then once i have my little bundle put together i'm just gonna come right down here and just lay that bundle so that I get good coverage. I want it to just completely flow with what I just laid down. And then just pin them in there. And I can see I've really got a lot of stem poking out on this. And I mean, you might could cut your stems a little bit shorter. Um, I think I always give myself plenty just so I know that I can feather them. Because if you don't feather them, it's going to be harder to get the, the good coverage on the inside and the top. So by feathering them, see, you're, you're, you're not seeing the center. You're getting your coverage in the center, and you're getting your coverage on the top. And we get glue webs, always glue webs. Thank you, Pam. I do, too. I love the different shades of purple. Yes, yes, Mimi. Hey, Jane. There's my cousin, Jane. Good to see you. Good to see all you guys. Yes, loving it. Thank you, guys. Um... I think that I'm uh, the the this one okay. Here's a sad looking little fella. Um, so I'm gonna lay this sad baby over here. We'll find a piece for it, 
this one only had one, but I'm still going to use it. So this, if you have a weak set that doesn't have the full three on there, then don't count that as one in your five, okay? Just plop it in there and go ahead and feather it. So you have all of your co colors and you have a nice little bundle that's going to cover a nice area. And then just come right down, cover up the stems you just did. And I forgot to glue those, so let me go back and glue those. Put my little bit of glue on here. Uh, I shipped one of these to a lady, I think for her mother, last week. And I haven't heard anything about it falling apart or getting damaged in shipping. So uh, that makes me happy. The one, one of the ones that I shipped out making it in the other uh, way did split the foam the foam frame split during shipping so that's why I thought I would try it this way because I think that ribbon gives it a little bit more that foam a little bit more support and then I'm just going to dab my glue on there and you know whatever works easiest for you guys there's no got to be this way or got to be that way you know, if you'd rather dip your pins in the hot glue and then put them in, um, if you just want to do, you know, two or three bush, you know, uh, stems at a time, I'm just showing you the way that works for Val. So, you know, you can make it your way. Um, I just think I'd like to show you guys the easiest uh, way that I have figured out how to do it. Let me look at our colors so I can see. We need some more purple and we need some more of uh let's see pull out some more of these some of this lighter purple so again i'm just laying them in my hand now this one is a short stem so i'm going to lay it up towards the top so that i make sure that it gets caught when i push in my pen you see how short that stem was so i'm going to put it up towards this you know the beginning where the pin's going to go in and then you see you just want to feather them so that they lay right in your hand if you can get them to lay right in your hand then they're going to lay right on your um on your wreath let's get i got too much of that color let's do this color this one is a longer stem so it actually i'm going to put it towards the back i think all right. So if it looks good in your hand, then it's going to look good on your frame. And then again, just lay them to cover up what you just previously did. And then just push your pins in. Yeah, I think I think layering it in your hands, that's important because you get an overall perspective of how it's going to look when you lay it down. If you just randomly picked them up and just placed them together, um, they may not be as even. And I'm just a, a stickler to have it nice and even. I want it to stay even. Hi, Judy Bardman. How are you? Vicki, good to see you. I think this is a good way to do it, too. And like I said, it's moving along um, really quickly. Let's get some more of this dark purple in here. I think I'm tending to go too much. Now, see, this one's only got... Well, it's got three, but you got one tulip that's open, and it's okay because, you know, you can have imperfections. Um, again, I'm going to layer it. I'm going to put another purple, and then a lighter purple towards the outside, and then maybe this lighter purple towards this side. And there's our bushel. And then we're just going to lay it down. And I just try to push them up to where they're going to cover up everything we just did. And you could definitely pick any color tulips y'all want to do. Uh, you know, you may not want to layer your different colors. You may just want to do them all, you know, the dark purple or all the light purple. It's, uh, it's totally up to you how you would like it to be. All right, and then I'm going to add a little hot glue just to make sure that my pins are going to stay in place. And then you can kind of fluff them um, as you're going to, just to get a better idea 
um, how they're how they're laying. Uh, let's see. Let's get a little of the purple in the back. Let's do some more of the lighter. And I can tell you what I'm going to do. I can see it right now. And this is another good trick. I'm going to show you all another trick here real quick. Getting my five stems in here. So I've layered them in my hand. And I'm going to lay them down to where I see that they're covering. And then I'm just going to pin it right into that foam. Like I said, you'll probably go through about a hundred of these pins, uh, or pretty close to it. And then I see a few little stems that are protruding, so I'm just going to snap those away. And then add my hot glue. Okay, you see where I've got over here, I've got a, a big clump of the, pur of the lighter purple. If you want to go back in and just add a little bit of color variety, you can actually take your stem, trim it down, just put a little dab of hot glue on the end of that stem. And this is also a good way to, to fill in if you have a gap. And you don't have to pin it. You can push it right down in there. See? Whoops. And I'm getting stuck. <laughs> Glue webs. See how I was able to just push that down in there? So I can get some more of that color um, that I wanted over here. So and I kind of any so that's one thing that you'll want to do when you go back is look for any gaps. And then you can just, you know, at that point you can just glue the, the bud in there itself or the stem in there itself. So we got any questions? How we doing? Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Judy. Hi, Shauna. How are you? Jennifer, my new customer, Jennifer. Jennifer, it's good to see you. Good to see you. All right. I'm starting to feather them here. Getting a purple in the back. And then keeping my stems together. And then just layering them in here. And then getting five of them in. And there's my bundle. And then I'm just going to take my bundle and just lay it down and pin it in. It's not hard. It's really not hard. It's very simple, guys. Again, just coming. This leaf right here, for some reason, I don't know. I don't know what I don't like about it. It's maybe it just looks bigger than most of them, and I've already put it in there, so I'm just going to cut that big old leaf off. All right, and then cut your stems, trim them down, add your hot glue. And just be careful that you don't burn yourself with your hot glue. Um, I have a dual temperature glue gun, and it has a low setting on it, and I use the low setting just so I don't get burned, because I promise you I have way too many burns <laughs> from using these. Hey, Crystal, how are you? Dolores, good time to see you. Thank you. Oh, yes, you would love this. Thank you, Tammy. It is wonderful. It is, it's, uh, this makes, y'all, you could do these for gifts. You know, you learn how to make them and uh, give them for Mother's Day gifts, for birthday gifts. Um, you know, just uh, every woman loves flowers. And again, these are the flowers that are going to stay with us. You know, they're not going to die. And the flowers from Michael's look so real. I mean, I'm just thrilled with how pretty they are. Aren't those just gorgeous? I mean, the flowers, I just, I love them. Uh, Michaels has got excellent florals. Uh, I buy a lot of my florals from Michaels because I think they're so, so good. Y'all don't forget to sprinkle and share and like and give me some hearts. 
uh, let me know that you like what I'm doing. So I know that you guys want to keep um, watching me do stuff. I'm thinking next Sunday we're probably going to make a, hmm, I can't decide between a swag or a grapevine. What do y'all think? What would you like to see next week? A swag or a grapevine? All right, let me hold up and take a look. All right, I see a whole lot of purple in here, so I need to break up that color. See, I'm talking about how much it's a little heavy right here. So I'm going to add one of these pretty lilacs, and I'm just going to trim that stem down a little bit and poke it right in. Just add a little bit of glue. And I'm just going to place it. Just kind of lift them up and then just place it. Push it right in there like you were pushing it into a grapevine. It's got the glue on it, so that glue is going to hold it. What y'all want to see next week? Thank you, Christelle. Yes, Casey did spoil her mama. She was, oh, she colored my hair. I don't know if y'all noticed that. <laughs> she did color my hair, too, so I'm blonde again. I'm so excited. I was really, I had a serious case of the roots. Uh, lots of roots. Way too many roots, all right? I'm going to feather them in my hand. Get me some different colors. Let's see, we need more, of a little bit more of the purple. Now, see if your stem is long longer I tend to make sure I put that one towards the back because you know it's impossible to get all of your stems the exact length um, the same exact length so I just use that to my advantage and then again I'm just going to lay them to where they're not all bunched up together to where they're spaced out don't like how that one's laying let's see I'm going to flip it over and then I just lost a bud and I'll find it where'd it go there it is. It went into my basket. Alright, now I just got to find where it came from. Oh, and I also have a wreath kit for sale, y'all. I have put together um, my first wreath kit. And Tammy is on here. Tammy has already purchased a wreath kit. I'll find where it goes. Let me go ahead and lay it down so I don't have them all in my hand. I have put together a fall wreath kit, and I probably will be making that two weeks from today. So, you guys that want to make your own wreath, it's a very nice kit. I got some good quality material. Um, you'll get a lot for your money. Uh, so, it's, I'll show you all that kit again in a minute. And we're going to add our hot glue. Or y'all just don't forget towards the end. I'll show you. I'll show you that. Now, I've kind of, see how I've kind of got a little gap right here? So, I'm just going to grab one of these and then just trim it down. Add a little hot glue. And then just pull back the rest of them and then just slide that right in there. And then just kind of fluff it out. Swag, swag, grapevine. <laughs> Hi, Rick. My husband's watching swag. Sean Bennett's watching. Hey, Sean. That's my nephew. Good to see you. Anything I decide. Oh, thank you, Elaine. I appreciate that. Uh, Mimi, have you never made um, a tulip wreath before? It does. It is really easy. It's. It is easy. And if you don't want to do it, um, this method on my um. On my YouTube channel, I have another way um, to make a tulip wreath that I made that I actually gave away to a viewer. So, if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, guys, please subscribe. Um, I always put um, whatever lives I do on here. I download them onto YouTube. And um, I also put some help, helpful tidbits on there sometimes. We've got a straight, odd piece of plastic on that one, so I'm just going to cut that away. So, are you understand or understanding what I'm talking about, layering them in your hand so that they, they, they look 
full but spread out so you're getting that coverage um, on both sides and then you're also blending your colors and then just take it straight to the tulip wreath and just lay it down and pin it in thank you Tammy I try to explain things well um, I always worry that you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing I mean I try to get it as close down to the table as I can now here's that bud and I don't know exactly where it came off of so I'm just going to plop a little bit of hot glue on that little tiny bud and just poke it in there and it'll stay and then we're going to snip it off snip off these excess pieces of stem because we don't want those to poke somebody not making a mess thank you for sharing Tammy thank you Denise wreath kits are they're awesome they take the guesswork out of um, how to make your wreath you don't have to worry about matching up your colors uh, matching up your ribbons where to purchase the right sign uh, I've done all that work for you and like I said, I've, I've got good quality um, items that I'm using. You get a full roll of 21 inch mesh. You get two full rolls of 10 inch mesh. Um, and again, you'll get a sign. You get the work frame. Uh, I have a, a pick one full roll of ribbon and then uh, five yards of the other ribbon. So you'll have plenty. Uh, you'll have leftover mesh that you can use for another project. You'll have enough leftover mesh on the 21 and the two 10 inch rolls to definitely use for another project. So don't let the price scare you. Just remember you're getting full rolls of mesh. So you'll have enough to make multiple items. It's not just going to be enough just to make the one that we're going to do and that's it. All right, we're almost getting towards the end guys getting closer and closer to the end let's blend in some more got a long stem so I'll put that towards the back get this one in and like I say once you go all the way around then it's just a matter of going back in and filling in where there's gaps okay so here's our bushel now I've laid it out kind of almost looks like a little baby bouquet doesn't it kind of reminds you of how you would lay it into a little bouquet and then just lay it right down and get your pins and just push it in so what do y'all think do you think you can make one of these are you guys going to go get some tulips and try to make a tulip wreath I think tulip wreaths are also good sellers so if you make wreaths to sell um, these are good you can make these to sell like I said or make them to give us gifts all right here's what we got so far we're almost done try to get it where you guys can see what y'all think are we liking it give me some hearts what do y'all think is it looking good thank you Shelly all you wreath makers find such cute ribbon you know and that's and that's something that it's that's good um again about buying a kit you know um it's just sometimes it's just easier to, if, if you're a lot of times you have to do a minimum order with multiple um craft sites to get the items that you're looking for so you're having to spend a lot more money um on making the wreath than what you intended on because you've got to go so many different places to purchase your supplies so when you purchase a wreath kit you know I've done all the shopping I've done all the minimum orders and and you know got the merchandise from multiple places and then you don't have to worry about that you just get it it comes to your door and you are ready to make a wreath and then we will make the wreath together on a live and you'll have that live to continue to watch if you want to or you can completely do your wreath a different way altogether uh, it doesn't have to be the way I make it 
you know, everybody likes to make it a little bit of their own. Of course, I'm sending stems flying everywhere. We're almost we're almost to the end. This is going real quick. I think it's faster, definitely faster this way um, than pushing each individual stem into the foam. What do y'all think? You think this is better? I don't know how many of y'all saw the other uh, tulip wreath. Do you think this, this, this way is easier? Uh, give me some likes if you think this is easier than putting in each little individual stem. I think it is. I think it's easier. Thank y'all. Yeah, I do too. I love blending the different shades. Um, I think it's 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 nice to be able to have those different blends of color. It gives it, I don't know. Now it just gives it it gives it to me. It just gives it a lot more look of real. You wouldn't have the exact same color all you know planted together in your flower garden. You tend to put in different colors. All right, now we're right here towards the end. So I do want to show y'all, this is what I usually do when I get towards the end. Let's see if I can get this where you guys can see it. I'll kind of lay it right in here at a little bit more of an angle towards the back. Because now your stems are going to be coming into your one you just placed. So I'm going to try to feather them in and you might even add um, smaller bunches. It may not be a full bunch of five. You just want to make sure that you get them to where they all blend in there together. And I really do like putting the hot glue on them also. Just to make sure, because we don't want to mess up these tulips with our stems. So if you noticed, I trimmed down those stems just a little bit, because I don't want to um, harm the tulips that are already there. get some hot glue. See how close we are to being done. Uh, let's see. Let's get some more of this color. Love that color. That's so pretty. And let's just go with three. Three pieces and towards the end I am going to just cut that stem down just a little bit more so I don't have a big bunch of stem. And then I'm just going to lay this in, kind of lift up these tulips, the existing tulips, and just kind of squeeze this one in. Oops, couldn't find my pen. And then just be careful not to pin yourself. Put two of them in. hot glue it and at this point it's probably the easiest to just go ahead and do some of your individual pieces and just push them in there like I was showing you see how we have this little gap now so all I'm gonna do is start taking individual stems and just place them again towards the outside so just you kind of just have to do it a little bit by trial a little bit by air okay just so you can get it to match up without getting into all the other stems. I just kind of have a tendency to come to the outside more uh, when I'm getting towards the end. It's easier to get those up in there. Go a little bit towards the outside. And then secure it tightly. Add my little bit of glue. Make sure that's going to stay. Alright, and then I'm going to do the same thing right over here on this edge. I'm just going to kind of start feathering in some right along this outer edge. What that does is it gives you a makes it fuller. This is usually how I end up going and using another good two to three bushels is is going around this outer edge and adding additional because I want there to be tulips all 
over it. See, that's kind of filling in the sides by doing that outer edge, but you only need to do about two bundles uh, to fill out your outer edge. That's all you'll need for that. How we doing, guys? You made it with daffodils. Yes, I think I saw you, Kim. You posted a picture. Um, Facebook took away your hearts? Well, that's weird, Denise. Um, yes, much easier, much easier than it, the other way. Um, take your time, you're getting out of yard work. Mimi, you're so funny. <laughs> so you can get out of yard work if you say, I've got to go learn how to make a tulip wreath. All right, I'm going to come in here and just put one inside there. That's where they were, um, where I just kind of met them up together. And just remember, you want to keep them going in at the same angle. Um, so that it flows like a nice big giant circle. You know, this would be so pretty in a little girl's room or in a bathroom. I can totally see this hanging up in, in a bathroom, powder room, you know, maybe the dressing area part of the table. Uh, just something where you want um, something year round that you can hold on to and, and keep out. Alrighty, and I'll tell you, it is humid here today. I can tell we got a storm moving in um, in the Gulf because it is so humid here. It's just awful. You walk outside and it's it's just that's too many dark purple. Get a light purple. You just walk outside and start sweating immediately. Now I'm not sure if I remember, Mimi. Where are you from? What part of the where, what part of the country are you from? I'm sure it's hot everywhere by now. There's probably not very many places it's not hot. I know the humidity in the south is what always makes it so hard. Because we are always humid. Okay, then just kind of step back. Take a look at what you've got. You know, that way you can always go back in and fill your gaps. And then again, like I said, just kind of bring it along on the sides. Uh, just take one or two, uh, one or two full, and just come in there. And, and I just kind of push the pins up almost into the, the previous bushel. So see how, how close up here I'm getting those on the outside. I push them up real close to the other bushes. And then just poke it in with your pen. And you probably only need one pen at that point because you're only holding two stems. And then I'm adding um, the hot glue. And this is just filling in your sides. So that the wreath is consistent. Again, just push it right up tight. Push it tight up into this where this last bushel was. Just take your pin. Push that in. It's not hard, guys. I bet you every one of y'all can make one of these now. What do y'all think? And it's, uh, it's not hard. It's just, it's just making sure that you keep it balanced. That's all. Yes, it does easier. Love the colors. Hey, Linda. Linda was the winner of my orange tulip wreath. Uh, she was the one, the other video that I have on my YouTube channel. Um, and I may, hey guys, I may sneak on one day this week because I have got a custom order for something that I've never done uh, exactly before, and that's a cemetery wreath. And I'm going to be making one for Linda Langer. Casey made the uh, custom sign. And I got the, uh, the cemetery frame in. It came in, I think it came in on Friday. Uh, I'll show you what that looks like, too. And so I may just jump on and do a quick live and uh, just kind of show y'all what I'm doing. I've got a good idea in my mind of how I want it to look. So that could be something really unique. It's going to be on an evergreen base. I don't know if any of y'all have ever made anything on an evergreen base before. Uh, so I thought that that was going to be uh, 
that's going to be fun. I mean, um, it's a sad occasion, uh, but it's a it's a nice commemorative uh, wreath that's going to mean a lot to Linda, and I'm excited that she asked me and Casey to do it for her. All right, and we only have a couple more here, and then we're going to let this, uh, let's get this light purple in there. We're going to get a bow on it, and we're going to be done. So let's see, we've been on about an hour, and the only thing I did ahead of time really was wrap the frame, and wrapping the frame probably took me maybe 15, 20 minutes at the most. So you see how I'm filling out the sides? So that the sides are, are full too. And you just keep doing that all the way around the side. You guys are probably about tired of watching me pin tulips. Uh, Kentucky is very human too. Yes. I know. The minute you walk outside, you're, you're sweating. I mean, you're just dripping. Hi, Annie. Good to see you. Thank you for coming in today. Always hot in Louisiana. Yes. Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay, Mimi. Yes, it's hot today. Is it humid in Cincinnati? Uh, I know Kentucky is. Yeah, Tammy. I, I've been through, I think, I know where, I've actually been through Paducah, Kentucky, uh, Tammy, when I used to come down south when I lived in Kansas City, um, we would come through Paducah, Kentucky, and that's where Rick and I would spend the night, because um, we would cut the drive in half, and we would spend the night in Paducah, Kentucky. I think that's such a cool name. Now, right there, I did three stems. It's just a matter of doing, just use your own judgment, guys. However full your wreath you want it to be. Uh, I like it nice and full, and I generally will use every bit of the of the 18 bushels, because I just, I don't scrimp. I like everything to be full, and uh, I don't, you know, like I said, I want it to look perfect. I want someone to, when they open their box and they get their tulip wreath, they, I just want them to just be happy and thrilled. And nothing makes me more tickled is when you guys share pictures when you receive your wreath and you hang it up like Pam did yesterday. And another customer of mine, Pam, uh, two Pams yesterday, uh, so I see how it looks you know, where it's, its home is, uh, I love, love that. And then it lets me know how happy you are. And that's why I do this, is to make people happy. It just makes me happy. Okay, so next week we'll do a swag. And then the following week we're going to do my fall wreath kit. And like I said, you might want to just keep an eye out. I don't know that I'll do uh, any announcement or anything. I might just be working on Linda's and just pop on uh, Facebook or YouTube just for a little bit uh, to show what uh, what I come up with, you know, what my plan is and how it's working. I, I picked up some uh, nice nautical. It has a nautical theme to it. Uh, so I picked up some cute nautical embellishments and I've got some pretty mesh and florals to go on it. And then, of course, Casey made the custom sign for it, which is just beautiful. So I think it's going to be really fun to watch. At least I hope so. And, and for the most part, I can finish this last little bit off of uh, off camera. And let's go ahead and make a bow. Y'all want to, I'm going to put a little bow on it. Let me hold this up so you guys can see it, get a better look. So now you can just continue, um, you know, filling it in. If you see a gap through here, you know, you can just, like I showed you, just take your, your tulip stem and just poke it down in there with your hot glue on it. But uh, here is your tulip wreath. What do y'all think about these colors? I just love these colors together, don't you? I think they're so pretty. Uh, this is gorgeous. Like I said, I've made the orange and uh, the uh, yellow, but I wanted to do purple because I just love purple. So, uh, so we like it, guys. Are we? Are, you think we could do this? You guys think you can make one? Yeah, I think so. I think you guys can do one of these. Uh, and this is a nice size. It'll end up being about. Uh, it's about 18 inches. 
uh, 17 to 18 inches when you get through. So, you know, I'll finish filling in the rest of this side off camera um, so you guys don't have to watch me do all that. We almost, this is what I have left, okay? 18 bushels, guys, 18 bushels. And here's what I have left. You can see that. So 18, 18 bushels in each bushel had this much on it. So you will definitely go through some tulips. So by all means, go to Michaels or order them from Michaels. Get them right now while they're on sale, because uh, you will you'll use a lot of tulips to make a tulip wreath. So they can get very expensive if you don't do it um, while that stuff's on sale. All right, so we're gonna make a a little bow, and I'm looking for my bodabra, and we'll make an easy little bow. Um, I picked out, put this back down, lay some of this stuff aside. Have y'all got any other questions while I'm um, working on making a little bow? Anything that, uh, that you don't need, to, uh, you need answered? <laughs> Pam, I know I've got an accent, that's for sure. <laughs> yes, I'm in the South, and I, and I talk like I'm in the South. Thank you, ladies. Uh, I'm going to unplug this glue gun. So I don't burn myself while I'm making a. This is the uh, the ribbon that I thought was pretty because it has the darker purple, the lighter purple, and the uh, and the lilac in it. Um, and a tulip wreath to me, you don't want to overwhelm it. It's a smaller wreath, so I usually always just use a one and a half inch ribbon. And uh, I'm just gonna lay it in my little bow dabra and I'm going to make about a 10 inch tail and then just pinch it and then I think all I made on the other one was probably about a 5 inch loop thank you Denise you want to make one now oh these are so much fun oh did you see my hair was it up was it up long enough for you to see I'm blonde again I'm so glad. Thank you, Casey, for coloring my hair. <laughs> you have that ribbon, Denise? It's a beautiful ribbon. All right, so I'm just going to put it in the Bodabra, pull out some ribbon, and I'm going to just make about a five-inch loop. And we'll do three loops on each side. I just use my mat uh, to measure my loops. And then twist it to get your ugly side up. And... Pull my tail down. I got it on the 10, so I know if I come to the 5, that should be even. I'm going to lift them up to be sure because one looks too big, so I'm going to let that one go down just a little bit. I love a bodabra. It's uh, so easy to get your bows, you know, the right, the same. Then we're going to twist it. This wreath is in my Etsy shop, available for purchase. If you don't want to make one and you want to purchase one, it is already in my Etsy shop. Uh, Y'all don't forget, let me show you my fall wreath kit that is in my Etsy shop. Uh, I have two left. I didn't make a lot um, since I'm, you know, new. I didn't know, you know, how many people would purchase it. And then uh, I took Casey the blank signs so she can start working on the hand-painted um, Christmas signs for my Christmas wreath. And I've already got my all my supplies ordered for that because, you know, supplies are short right now. So you want to make sure, you know, you get everything in advance. Uh, again, that's another reason why I started putting my stuff together so early. Um, it's because of... Uh, supplies being short. I didn't want to not be able to get what I, I wanted to get to my customers. So, um, you know, that's another thing and a big advantage about getting a kit. Um, you know, you, you're going to know you have all the pieces that you need. And I did want to share this too, guys. Um, I ordered these from, I think it was called, a place called Factory Craft, and they're 18-inch pipe cleaners. And the reason why I wanted 18 18 inch pipe cleaners was pipe cleaners are my favorite thing to tie on my bows because I can twist it tight and then you have a nice solid 
um, structure to tie into your, your wreath. So I was tickled to death. I think it was a place was called Factory Direct. Uh, I can't remember, but I got a bunch of white and I got some red. So that way I know it's going to go around my tulip wreath. And I'm just going to lift up my stack and use my white pipe cleaner here. And I, I just lift, I can lift up this little tiny bow and just twist it just like it was mesh. Uh, and then that'll get your... Uh, your bow nice and tight and then I'm just going to pull my tails down and lift up those loops. I've got three loops on each side so I'm just going to fluff it. I do love this ribbon. It's pretty. I think it, you know, some, and you don't have to do a bow if you don't want to do a bow, but I think the bows, um, really add a lot to it. It just kind of gives it another little pop of color. And I did dovetail my ends, so my ends are dovetailed. So here's our little our little simple bow. Three loops on each side. And then I am going to just come here and let me find a spot where the sides are already done. Okay. Kind of look for a weaker side, maybe a side that is not as full that looks like it could use a little extra or like here I've got that big clump of uh, darker purple so I think this would be a good spot to put my rip my bow in I do like these longers oh and I wanted to say a special thank you um, Denise is on here Denise Shook and she is one of my design sisters and she sent me a gift this week of some ribbon and pipe cleaners, a lot of two and a half inch ribbon. And Denise, I just want to tell you, thank you so much for that. Uh, that means that's that many more projects I can make and uh, teach you guys. So I was real tickled. Thank you, Denise, for being so thoughtful. And because it does get expensive um, when you're a crafter. And I think my tails might be a tiny bit long, so I'm going to trim these just a bit. And then I'm going to hold it up one more time. Let's trim them down just a smidge. And then we'll see how we like it. Kind of like I'm about the same length. we go. So what do y'all think? Do you like the bow? Bow or no bow? It's a completely up to you. If we need to make the loop smaller, you can always adjust those. I like a bow. Uh, I just think it kind of adds a little more class to it. So, um, so here is our tulip wreath, guys. I hope you like it. I hope you've enjoyed learning today how you can make your own tulip wreath. Um, like I said, I think that this this process is much easier um, than the other process, and I think that um, using wrapping it, you know, with this this ribbon, it does give your foam board a little bit more solid support, so that when it's shipped, it's not going to split. All right, so I was going to show y'all. Oh, here is the uh, cemetery wreath form that I will be using to make uh, my cemetery wreath. And this came from um, Craft Outlet. So it's the evergreen base. It's the two-tiered base. And then it has the stake so that it will go right into the ground so that Linda can put it right there at the gravesite. And so I will probably sneak on sometime this week on um, here or YouTube One and just let y'all see what I'm doing with this. I'm excited um, that, she, again, that she asked me to make one and I thought that was sweet and then I want to show y'all what you get in my wreath kit so let me just grab that real quick Oops. all right here's our fall wreath kit that I have put together you get a 21 inch roll of the jute poly mesh this is red moss green and natural so this is a wonderful, good mesh, guys. Very high quality. That is a jute poly. 
you get a full ten inch row of your deco poly mesh in orange. We're going to make truffles with these. And then this pretty uh, high foil. Uh, I guess it's kind of a, it's kind of a, not an olive green, but it's in between, kind of more like a medium green. So this is a deco poly mesh. It has the uh, foil running through it. So we're going to do probably alternate cruffles with these. And then you get your burlap work frame, 15 inch work frame that has all the ties already attached. You'll get this pretty um, fall pick with the sunflower and the pumpkin. So we can add this to our wreath when we get done. And then as far as your ribbons and the sign, I love this sign. This is the welcome sign that comes in the kit. And uh, this is nice and fall and pumpkin-y. <laughs> and then you get one full roll of this ribbon, guys. Look how perfect that matches. Can you see that? Perfect. Perfect match. So again, if you're ever get nervous about what to to pick, all right, I picked it for you so I know it's going to look good. You get a full roll. This is a 10-yard roll, a 1.5-inch ribbon. And then you'll have your, uh, we'll use this ribbon and our tails. Here are the other tails. You'll have a one and a half inch pumpkin. You get five yards of this. And we will pair that with this pretty orange that I use a lot. You get five yards of that. And then we have the uh, moss green check. Five yards of this ribbon. And this will pair with this when we go to do our, our actual um, ribbon tails. And then you get an additional two yards of this for the bow. Um, we'll use this ribbon in the bow along with the other four. So we are going to make a bow and I'll do the right the bow on the live. So this is a pretty rust sunflower. Uh, so again this is going to pick up really pretty with our with our pick. Alright so I have two of those available in my Etsy shop. So you guys will do this in two weeks. Next week we'll do a swag and then um, after that we'll go ahead and do this ball kit. Okay, so I think that's all I've got. Um, all I've got going on, guys. I appreciate you coming today. Thank you so much. Um, next Sunday, 2 o'clock, uh, 2 o'clock Central. Uh, I don't know the theme of the swag, but I'm kind of leaning towards a flamingo swag. Uh, I've got everything I need to make. Um, that that would be really pretty so uh, probably a flamingo swag um, or a fall swag I got a real pretty garland in with some more fall so what are you guys in the mood for flamingo or fall that's my last question I promise y'all uh, you tell me what kind of swag you want me to make so uh, that way I don't have to think about it I just pull it all together and again I appreciate y'all so much I appreciate y'all all the time you did get your order today. I've never known them to order uh, deliver on on um, Sunday, so that's neat, Denise. I'm glad. And again, Denise, thank you for all the the wonderful goodies. I do plan to use those. I, I've already have an idea for a really pretty farmhouse. Um, okay, thank y'all. Good. Love the bow. Love the tulip wreath. Okay, so next Sunday at two o'clock, uh, y'all just let me know. And we will make a swag. Uh, like I said, I would um, I'll sneak on and do a little a little bit of the cemetery wreath with you because I know I was having trouble trying to find um, tutorials myself on that. So I thought, well, I'm going to share um, that with you guys. Uh, so you can kind of if you ever have one you've got to make or need one, you can see what I'm going to do on mine. Um, okay, that's all I've got. How much is my kit? Shelly, this kit is 75 including shipping. Uh, so basically it's uh, enough to make your wreath, that wreath, and plus you're going to have probably a half a roll of the 10 inch mesh left over. Uh, we're going to do poofs with the uh, 21 inch mesh so you'll have some of that left over. And then again, like I say, you're going to get five yards of all this ribbon so you'll have plenty for your ribbon tails and your bow. 
um, and your sign and your burlap or burlap wreath form. So it's the complete kit, y'all. Everything's with it. Fall. Shelly says fall. Hey, Trisha, how are you? Flamingo, flamingo. Fall, fall, fall. Why don't we do flamingo next week since I'm going to be doing a fall wreath kit the following Sunday and then I promise we'll come back and do another fall swag maybe as we get a little bit closer to fall okay so we'll do a flamingo swag next uh, week at two o'clock so until then I love y'all I appreciate y'all I appreciate your support y'all have a great afternoon and uh, watch for me sometime during the week all right bye guys